So check this out. He just connected another dot. What? Number one, first thing, Joseph is a type of Christ, right? And one day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Joseph's first dream was that, you know, all the sheaves, that's harvest time, <laughs> that was gathered together, all bowed. It's always in the springtime. Wow, we can be looking for Jesus. All the wheats bowed and made abstinence to him. And they're like, what did you say? That's the same. Joseph and all the ones that was around him, the eleven, all bowed and made abstinence to him. That's twelve. Well, it's pretty amazing because in heaven, and we're going to go there, there's twelve stars. Remember? My brother, that was an amazing connection. The other one was, he had another dream. So now he's letting us know when he's coming, when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, it's the springtime. Wow! Beyond the shadow of a doubt. Put off blowing the trumpets in the end. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. I showed you how the spring feast was the fulfillment of the fall. They don't never show no coming in the fall. Nowhere in the Bible. Wow. Here it is. Here's the secrets. In the spring, Joseph dreams a dream. He is, Christ, he is a type of Christ. All the wheat bow down to him. Right? The second dream he has. A dream that the sun and the moon, oh! And the 11 stars all bow down and made abstinence to me. That's the sign in heaven. The woman, even Jacob said, you're saying I'm the son and your mother is the moon? Oh, wow. Wow. Right. Yeah. My God. He's amazing. You can't get around him. We have a sure word of prophecy that Jesus is coming for you and me. No matter what we have to go through, no matter what comes our way, we can rely on his word because his word never changes. It's the same. It says the same thing over and over and over again. And with that, I'm going to stop. Harvest time is Wednesday. Be sure to be here. Be a part of the 120 who has gathered. Because we never know, brothers and sisters. It might be the very night, Wednesday, he comes and gets us. Can you imagine? My God. It's what I look for every day. Can't wait to be with him. He's everything. But you know what? 500 witnessed what he did and more. 1 Corinthians 15. 500 witnessed him go up into heaven. 500 hundred of them that were standing there. He told them, go wait and tarry till you be endued with power. They know. But you know what? Just 10 days wait. And the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father of when the Spirit comes that seals us into the day. Just go wait. But you know what? 380 of them couldn't. He told 500 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 14? 1 Corinthians, I'm going to give it to you. And guess what? Uh, man, he's amazing. Father. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. When you talk about Jesus, the Spirit comes. He says, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and verse, uh, and, uh, verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you, Paul said, you first of all, which I uh, also received, how that Christ died for our sin according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, 
according to the scriptures. Right? It was foretold that it was going to happen. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once. Wow! Wow! He told them. Why is there only 120 left? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because they had other stuff to do. Oh, I got to go home and take care of my mom. I got to go take care of my dad. I got to go bury this one. I got to go, look, I ain't finished harvest in the field yet. I got to go fishing. Well, guess what? The day the Holy Spirit came down is actually the day the Lord's going to return for his bride. So if that was the day that God was returning for his bride, only 120 would have went. 380 would have been like, why didn't we stay? Why didn't we trust and believe? He who remains unto the end shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And so shall they ever be with him. So, kids, um, I wanted to say, where's the little man at? That's him right there. What's his name, baby? Right here, the little guy. Yeah. Tristan? The kids are dismissed to go with Miss Promise. Tristan came up, and he come by the table over there by me. He, was, he said, he said, uh, who's teaching today? And uh, I said, my wife, Miss Promise. He's like, oh, good. <laughs> you know, you know what? Yeah, that's awesome. You know, let me tell you something. That your children are going in the back right now and learn about Pentecost. You know, what we learn, they learn. The level's a little lower. But you know what? They're being raised in it. Amen. They're hearing it. They're seeing it. It's so much is going into them. You know, that's what's important. That's all that matters. When the world is being raised up out there that have, they have, you know what? The majority of them have no idea about the Hebraic roots of Christianity. But here it is. In our little church and in others around, man, they are learning some things that one day God is going to use them because we still have a little time left according to what you know I see God is going to use them so they begin to reveal and they can explain hey because in the end whether I'm here or not if I make it that far in the end there's going to be a great harvest that comes in and you know what in the end people are going to be looking for answers. Isn't it going to be good that if you have the answers and you're able to tell them, hey, this is what the Bible said was going to happen. This is the false Messiah. This is what's going to happen next. This is what he's going to do. <coughs> Let me tell you something. You're going to bring souls into the kingdom. Yeah, there'll be a great falling away from the faith, but the Bible talks about the latter rain, the great harvest in the end. Woo-woo! Son, aren't you glad you're in, in fellowship today? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yes. Uh huh. That's right. You know. You, that's exactly. You know what? Because let me tell you about this, about that little uh, thing, and we're going to get into the message. Um, well, this is the message, but we're going to get into the message. You have to be of one mind and one accord. Yeah. It has to, and yeah. the focal point is always going to be Jesus Christ every single time. So, if the focal point is not about Jesus, it can't be about me. It can't be about this church can't be about you can't be about you know um, an institution that you're trying to build that appears to be good whether it's taking care of orphans or widows or you know it's all 
the main focal point of everything is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's what they was focused in on. In the upper room. Let me tell you something. You think it was easy? You know, now, that wasn't 120 jammed up in a little room for 10 days. It's, they are walking around, but, you know, right there though. They stayed in communion, in fellowship. They came together. Because they knew that Pentecost, they knew, Jesus said, go wait till you be endued with power. They knew that this promise, whatever it was, the Holy Spirit, that the same works that I did, you're going to do. And I'm going to give you that promise. I'm going to give you that spirit. It's going to be imparted into you. All you have to do is go wait and tarry. So that now you can become as I was in the earth. You can become like me, not greater than me. But now the gospel will be preached all over. And you'll begin the wheat harvest. You see, the barley harvest has already happened. Happened, you know. The barley harvest goes all the way back to Adam. Christ was bringing in the barley all the way till he died. When he rose again, all those, like the thief on the cross, he was barley harvest. John the Baptist, barley harvest. Barley was the poor. The poor ate the barley. You see, from Jesus Christ's death, death, and resurrection, there was 49 days. Those 49 days fulfill the barley harvest from the day of Pentecost all the way back to the beginning, to Adam. You understand that? Now, the feast of fir the, the, the wheat harvest on Pentecost. Now, that was the first time the wheat began to come into the barn right there on Pentecost, the beginning of the wheat harvest. That's right, 3,000 were saved and it was on Pentecost, bam. 3,000 died at Pentecost at the giving of the law. Oh. But watch this. So the Holy Spirit comes down, and now they become sealed with the Holy Spirit. 120 of them. The beginning of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And now, the wheat, from that time, for two days or 2,000 years, God is, is gathering the wheat into His barn. When you die to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. No more a holding place. Abraham's bosom. He took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. You know, those couldn't go. The barley harvest couldn't go before the Lord prior to the blood being placed on the throne in heaven. Amen. Anointing the most, the most holy. All of them had to fall under the blood like you and I now falls under the blood. So this is the time God is gathering in the wheat. You and I are wheat. Says it plain as day in the Word. Now, what I want to do today, here's the message. Make it waste your Wednesday. <laughs> what I want to show you, I was going to take you to Elijah, and I, can, I'm going to sh I could show you in Scripture, because um, when you realize that every place you see this fire mentioned, the majority of times in the Old Covenant, you see there's a harvest and judgment. Okay? Right, watch this now. There was a great harvest at Pentecost and judgment followed right behind it. They started killing Christians everywhere. I mean, it's, there's a great judgment. Now, on that day, on that day, Pentecost, harvest judgment. That's what happens. And I'm going to show it to you over and over. That's the day fire comes down. So wow, if you know that's the day fire comes down, you could kind of now go in the Old Covenant and look at when did fire come down. Well, I know a few places. The Bible says that, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Fi Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. Elijah, that's right. Watch. Now you start, now put them together. How did the, how did the 50 prophets know that Elijah was going to be taken up? Elijah's name means Yahweh is God. Elisha, his right hand man, you know, was, his name means Yahweh is salvation. 
the 50 prophets, 50 is Pentecost. How did the 50 prophets know that Elisha, your master, is going to be taken up from you today? How did they know that? Because it was the day of Pentecost when fire comes down. What came down to get Elijah? A chariot of fire. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you look at it, I'm going to bring you to the story and show you the story and the pattern over and over. There's an end gathering. Fire came down on the day of Pentecost and a wheat harvest came into Christ's barn. 120, then 3,000. <laughs> right? Remember that scripture, 1 Corinthians 15? Watch this right here. What happens right after that? This happens every single time. Watch what, he, watch, watch what Paul says right here in Corinthians 15. He says, man, Lord, i got to get to the message. Watch what he says. And it says, and he, and, and watch this, 15.5, he says, And he that was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that, above five hundred of the brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are now dead. <laughs> what? Yes! Maybe you kill him! You, what? Anyway, let's get away from that. Now, let me show you something. Now, I'm going to take you into the story of Gideon. You ready? And I want, you to, I want to show you. Watch this really quick. The patterns are always the same. When Christ arose from the dead, you got to count seven sevens, 49 days. The 50th day is Pentecost. Watch these sevens. They're amazing. Amazing. Seven bowls, seven bowls, seven trumpets. Sound familiar? Right? right? Man. Watch this right here. Just amazing. God puts none of this in here by coincidence. Listen to what he says. And this is where we're going to start the message when we record it, put it up, however, I guess. We'll just let the Lord uh, lead. This is the time of, watch this, the time of judges. Judge. Just thought I might connected that. Watch this right here. And the children of Israel, it says, and starting in Judges chapter 6, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian. Midian's name means the place of judgment. For seven years. Wow. Seven and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Whoa! The Bible told, Jesus told them, when you see these signs, what sign? When they gather around Jerusalem, set an encampment around it, don't go down to your roof, from your rooftop to get your clothes or anything like that. Run! And they went into the dens and the caves, you know, because of this great encampment, Rome in 70 A.D., encamping around them. This picture is an exact picture of what happened with Solomon's temple on Av the Ninth, the day it was destroyed. The same, some 600 plus years later, Herod's temple in 70 A.D. on the exact same day. Solomon's temple was destroyed on Av the 9th, August the 9th, if you want to say. Herod's temple, Jesus said, you see this stone? Not one building will be left unturned to all, you know. Not one stone will be left unturned. Why? Because when the city burned in 70 A.D., they picked up every stone to carve the gold and the silver out of it. Wow, it was fulfilled in 70 A.D. But then puts forth a future prophecy of what's going to happen in the end. It's a repeat. These are cycles, patterns, where we could see it happened, it happened, it happened, it happened, it's going to happen again. So you and I know what's going to happen in the end. I declare the end from the beginning, says the Lord. You want to know what's going to happen in the end? Look to Revelation? That's okay. No. He says, look to the beginning. Oh. I'm the same. I'm never changing. So watch this. So now you get to some picture. Watch what you're going to see it. 
So, and so it was. Watch. Remember when I told you the harvest is? It's in the springtime, always. Watch what he said. And it was so, when Israel had sown the land, that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. That's the springtime when you plant. Right? Watch this. And they encamped against them, surrounded them, and destroyed the increase of the earth till they came unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. There's a great famine when the Lord returns. There's no food. Be warned. In the end, you might have to go without some food. And when the government would happen to open up some stores for you to sell out, to receive a mark to get something to eat, you better stay hungry. Yeah. Well, God wouldn't intend me to go through this. Look at my children, they're starving to death. Yeah. No, it's coming. And many are going to sell out for it. There's no way God could have intended me this. This is not the mark of the beast. This is not this, that what it is. You won't be able to buy or sell, saving you have the mark. Jesus said, I forewarned you and told you that this is coming. It happened in 70, it happened in 586 BC. Not only then, it happened in 70 AD. The food supply is cut off. When Elijah comes, the food supply is cut off. As the days of Elijah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Ah! No rain, no food. No food, no f it's famine. And like my brother said, kind of crazy if you're into YouTube and you see things right now. All over YouTube right now is cannibalism. Because that's what it's going to resort to in the end. As the days of Noah were. Let me stay focused. We have an amazing word. It says, for they came up with their cattle in their tents, and they came up as grasshoppers for a multitude, verse 5, for both they, their camels, were without number, and they entered the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. That's judgment. God brought judgment. Midianite means judgment. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent him a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you out from Egypt, and brought you forth uh, out of the house of bondage. Wow. When was that done? That was in the springtime. <laughs> children of Israel came out on Passover. At midnight. What you said? They came out of Egypt at midnight. Shoes on your feet. Staff in your hand, loins girded. Didn't have time for the bread to rise. Left with nothing, no substance to trust in God in the wilderness where there's no food, no planning, no animals, no nothing. Well, they had a few animals. But it's faith. It's going to require that again. Watch this. And the prophet... And he said, verse 9, And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppress you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. Wow. You get off away from the Lord. Man, you're in trouble. Remember, these two right here on this side, the two mountains in Shechem, one represents blessings. The other represents curses. Mount Gershom, blessing. Mount Ebal, these six tribes, curses. Shechem, between the shoulders. The, huh, watch this. Shechem, the place where the stones were set up on two mountains. Between the mountains was the ark set up. That ark is Christ. It's between the shoulders because it's the cross. 
right? On the right hand, the thief accepted him blessings. On the left, the thief curses. Ah! Huh. You think that's crazy? Let me show you how crazy that is. Six stones on the right. Six is the number of man. Six on the left, the number of man. One received the word, the other didn't. <sighs> you see what I'm saying? He is so amazing. I'm going back, I'm drawing on the oil. I'm in a well. How deep is your well? I remember I ministered a message on it. How deep is your well? How deep somebody who needing a drink can drop a pot into you? Do you have enough inside of you to give someone? It's not a, you think it's a cool cup of water? Naturally? When you can give someone a cool drink who is in dire need of a word from God. When you can draw out of your well and hand someone who needs something to drink rivers of living waters. Wow. Man, it's amazing stuff. Huh? If you give a prophet something to drink, you receive the prophet's ward. A prophet carries the word. Water is the word. Yeah. You see, it, it always, no matter how you look at it, watch, man, I got to stay, stay focused. Here you go. All right, watch this. Gideon now is called. Gideon. Gideon's name means hewer of trees. Okay? The reason he was called, he was, Gideon's name is the hewer of trees because he went and cut down his father's idols. So now this is a new time. Cutting down the idols, getting rid of them out of your life. Because what's coming? Watch, he says. And there, and, and there came an angel of the Lord that sat under an oak. Hey, girl, the oak, right? Rebecca. Which was in Orpah. Which is, uh, um, there was an oak which was in Orpah, which means hind. There was an oak behind. That pertained unto Joash. Now, Joash, um, the uh, Abel, the Abazarite. And his son was Gideon. Now Joash, his name means uh, my father is help. He is a descendant of Joseph. My father is help, my father is God. That's what his name means. My father is help, my father is God. He's a Benjamite, has a son. So my father is help, my father is God, who is a Benjamite, has a son whose name is Joash, the son of the right hand. Oh! Who is the one who's going to go and cut down the idols? The axe laid at the head. At the root. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus is the axe head. John said, for the axe head is laid at the root. Where's the axe head at? The axe head flew off into the Jordan, sunk, death burial, rose up again. Death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, at the Jordan, where John delivered the message that Jesus was the axe head. The axe head is at the root, a picture of Gideon, the hewer of trees, those that cut down the idols to make a stance for the Lord. Aya! Boy, watch. I'm so glad I came today, Lord. Because when we get together, there's more of the Spirit. The Spirit starts stirring and the waters start flowing. <laughs> Man. He says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be his miracles, which our fathers had told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? This is a direct connection that the firstborn, them killing the lamb and placing it on the door. We know that Jesus was the lamb. He is making a connection. Benjamin, the son of the right hand, making a connection. Back to Egypt. That's a sign that Christ was the lamb. It's all pointing to him, no matter how you look at it. That's why I don't care who they say wrote this book. 
It was written by the inspiration of God upon men if they knew it or not. That's yeah. right. That's right. And that's why when you go back into whether you look into the Tanakh or you look into the Midrash or you look into, excuse me, or you look into what the Muslims wrote, the book of the Quran is made up of the Old Covenant, New Covenant, and the writings of Muhammad. They pull out the deity of Jesus Christ. He didn't die. He didn't raise again. But you know what they can't do? They can't pull out what they can't see. Therefore, the names that are in there, they all speak of Jesus. I took their book, their own book. A Muslim asked me to read the Quran. I read it, showed him Jesus in it, and he ran out of my trailer. Ah! Don't tell me this is not the inspiration of God. His hands. Yes, yes, yes. This is the only book. This book has one story in it. Jesus. Yes, yes. From the beginning to the end. Yes. And if Rome has taken out a thousand books, why do I need more than 66? That's right. Come on. Give me the first five and I'll rip you apart. Yeah. No. Give me the first chapter of Barichi in the beginning and I'll show you Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, yes. One chapter. He is amazing. Yes. His word is amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, Thou mighty man of valor, verse 13, and Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if thou be Lord, be with us. Why then have we befallen unto all this? And where be all the miracles which our father did? Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of judgment. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of judgment. I have, I, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of judgment. Have not I sent thee? What? Who saves Israel? Yeshua. His very name is salvation. Watch. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewithal shall I save Israel? This is his man side. This is his flesh. He don't even know who he is. Who he represents. Right? He knew when Jesus came down and he can look back on the story. Wow. I was a picture of you. A type. You can too. Uh, you can too. He uses you and me. We're called Christians, Christians. Wow. Your life and what you go through, what you, where you find yourself at, well, you could actually look into it if you could see. Maybe you're in the wilderness somewhere, traveling, don't know where you're at. Maybe you're here or you're there. Man, then all of a sudden you begin to look back and you're like, wow. You start seeing how God had his hand in your life. And you see how God used you. Man, watch. Man, let me tell you. He says, he says, um, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewithal shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. Manasseh. Manasseh means causing to forget. That means what God has done. What Jesus done on the cross where the old covenant drags it up to show us our sin. The new covenant where blood covered in the old covenant, the new covenant washes it, washes it away. Why? Because it causes us to forget. <laughs> Ooh! What? Yeah. My family is in Manasseh. Joseph married Potiphar's daughter, firstborn Manasseh, called his name Manasseh so that Joseph said 
God has caused me to forget Woo. the troubles that I went through. Woo. Joseph being a picture of Jesus. Yeah. Here it is again. I'm only 15 verses in it and only showed you Jesus probably five or six times. Just give me a page. <laughs> Golly. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Oh, one man. We all are one man. Jesus Christ Christians, one body, one man, new covenant. You shall smite him as one man. What? Where do we get the one man deal from? Day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord. They all had the body with the mind of Christ, one man. Amen. I thought I might just share that with you. <laughs> and he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight. Oh, grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sun. The sun, huh? <laughs> S-O-N. That saved a wretch like me. And you. He loves you so much, girl. My God, I am so glad you're here. Let me tell you something. You're here. I don't care what it is you're struggling with. Listen to me. I don't care what it is you're struggling with. God has brought you here for a reason. And he's going to help you. Be encouraged. And listen. Keep on keeping on. Don't stop. Because your breakthrough's coming. Your breakthrough, Amanda, a man. A man. Your breakthrough is through a man, Jesus Christ. You were named by him. And you're going to make it. He loves you. Man. Man. <laughs> Turn around and I look at baptized in fire. Okay, Lord, fire. <laughs> I, I, I got I I to blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. <laughs> we'll blow the trumpet, people. <laughs> Yes, indeed, I am pumped, son. Man, listen to this. We ain't, phew. here, watch. It gets better. He says, he says, uh, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, uh, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou, that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. Ooh. This is, this angel of the Lord, 
is Jesus. This is Jesus. You don't put a present at a regular angel's foot. No. Nor do you bow to any tree. That's right. Ah! Yeah, that's right. This is the angel of the Lord, the leader of the host of the army of the Lord. Why do you think they said, for the sword of the Lord and of Gideon? Mm -hmm. uh. Fire from his altar. Not a false fire, but the fire that consumes you. The fire that judges you when you read it. The fire that tests you and cleanses you. But you have to be in the fire. Oh, no fire, no cleansing. And then, be obedient. Listen. And Gideon went in and made ready a kin, a kid, and an unleavened cakes of an ephah. <laughs> Man, oh my God. I, I, I can just begin to rip this thing apart. My God. Unleavened, without sin. No yeast. He's making something without sin. Who is he a picture of? An ephah? An ephah is a tenth part of an omer. He's laying a tie at his foot. So, whom shall I teach knowledge and understanding? Those who have been weaned off of this. This is the essential pieces of the doctrine of faith of believing in Jesus Christ, that he's the Messiah and the Savior. This is what the majority of Christians and everybody who ain't, who's in in the feast of first fruits. Wow. <laughs> Man! I've never read it like this before. You talk about turning the lights on, click. Wow. When I tell you I'm on fire like you, I'm receiving the fire from heaven, the revelation and understanding as it's falling on me and you together. Fire sitting on top of your heads. Pentecost. What did the fire do? That fire enabled them to be able to prove that Jesus was the Christ. What's happening right here before our eyes is exactly what was prophesied by Joel. You will receive power to preach the gospel. That means to be able to tell them beyond a shadow of a doubt who Jesus Christ is. It's happening in the spirit. He is here. Wow, man, watch this. And Gideon went in and, and Gideon, son of a Benjamite, son of the right hand, went in and made cakes and ephah. And the flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it to him. Rebecca under the oak. Wow. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened uh, cakes and lay them upon this rock. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I think somebody else is called a rock. Yeah. On a, not a rock. This rock. This rock. Under an oak, Rebecca. God dealing with you with oak trees, oak trees, oak trees. Hundreds of them by your house. He's sitting under the oak. 
Oh, oh wow. Huh. Go figure that one. He's sitting under the yoke. He's he'd been in his presence. Man, anyway, Lord, help me here, Father. He says, um, And Gideon perceived he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Wait, hold on, let me go back up. The flesh and the unleavened cakes. And, <laughs> well, I like this. Uh, um, and unleavened, and, and, wait, let me go back. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end. Wait, let me go back up. Golly, wow. Verse 20, I'm sorry. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Wait a second. I think Elijah put an offering on an altar and poured out water on it. That was Pentecost. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff. Then said, that was in his hand. And touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock. Man. And consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. He received the offering. Wow. Wow. I got to stop breaking this stuff down. And when, and when Gideon perceived that, um, that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas! Alas, O oh Lord God, for because I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face, oh my God. Oh my God. Nobody sees God face to face and live. He understands it. He saw the angel face to face. This is the leader of the host of the army of the Lord. Watch what he says. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not. Thou shalt not die. That is proven oh, yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's right. It was Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. That's right. Wow. Ah. Amen. Right. Questions. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and he called it Jehovah Shalom. Why? My, wow. My mom is all into, right now, God is going through Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El Elyon, yeah. Jehovah Mekadesh, and going through all of this. My mom is going through his names, and here it is. It says right here, he is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. He says, look, have peace. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You're not going to die. Mm. Wow, I've come face to face with Jesus Christ. Jehovah Shalom. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that's by it. These are, these are in the groves they carved things in it. And it says, and he built an altar into the, okay. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And, um, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his mother's household and the men of the city, that they could, uh, that they could not do it by day. And he did it by night. Um, and when the men of the city arose early in the morning, Behold, the altar of Baal was cut down, and the groves were cut down. That was by it. It's amazing that they got an altar of Baal that's going around the cities right now, around the world. Amen. Watch. Um, and the second bullock, uh, it says, And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cut down, and the grove was cut down. That was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon an altar that was built. And uh, they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired, they asked, and they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, done this thing. And the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that, we, that he may die. Now I'm going to stop translating for you guys, okay? I'm in verse 30, because I want to give you the story, to show you this Pentecost thing. So I'm going to stop breaking it down, okay? Because um, it will be here a little while. It's amazing. It says, and uh, then the men of the city said unto Joas, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that's by it. Um, and Joash said unto, uh, unto all that stood against him, Will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? Right? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death, while it is yet morning. <laughs> and if he be God... Let him plead for himself, because one has cast down his altar. 
Therefore, on that day, he called uh, him Jerubal, Jerubal, that means the, uh, the cutting down of Baal, the throwing down of Baal, right? That's what Christ did, destroyed the works of the enemy. Because he had thrown down this altar, there it is. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the vas valley of Jezreel. Wow, Jezreel is the city of Adam. <laughs> wow. The, Jordan rolled back all the way to Jezreel, 15 miles. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Get your house in order. 15 years. Hezekiah, remember? The stuff, like, wow. That's just. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Watch. And Abizar was gathered after him. What? There's a blowing of a trumpet and a gathering together unto him. <laughs> Man, I, I should have I seen what Abizar's name means. I didn't. And uh, I can't believe I don't have it wrote there. And he sent messages throughout all Manasseh, who was uh, also gathered after him. And he sent messages, messages unto Asher and Zeblum and Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. So this is, uh, let's see, this is Manasseh causing to forget. And Asher, happy as he, Zeblum, a man dwelling. Uh, Naphtali, a man of hire. Wow. That's right. I mean, how do you break it down? Naphtali is where Christ was born. Uh, he was born in Bethlehem, but conceived in Naphtali, in the city of Zebulun and Naphtali. This is a picture of Christ. Yeah. Between the land of Naphtali and Zebulun, shall the Messiah come forth. He was born. Mary was overshadowed. Okay? <laughs> this is a You see how what happens? A man dwelling, tabernacles. Watch this. I know I got to keep going. So, sorry. The sign in their name. Yeah, what's that? The sign in their name. Oh, yeah, the signs in their name. So if you want to go further, break the names down. Look, they're on the wall right there, 12 of them. See all the tribes up there? Important to know it. It, it pulls the layers back. And he says, And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, the outstretched hand, that we know that's the Lord, as thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the, on the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon the earth beside, then I shall know that thou will save Israel by mine hand, that thou hast said it. And then when it was so, for he rose up early in the morning, and thrust the fleece together, and wrinkled the dew out of the fleece on a bowl, uh, a bowl full of water. So he's looking for a word from the Lord, a fleece, and he wrings out water. Water is the word. Are you with me now? He looks for two signs because it's a witness. Watch this. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be against me, and I will speak but yet this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with this fleece. Right? Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew upon the ground. Then Jerubbabel, who was Gideon, the one who cuts down things, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well in Herod. Wow, they pitched beside a well. I ain't going to go into that. Uh, so that the host of the Midianites, the judgment, were on their north side. Uh, Dan was on the north side. His name means judgment anyway, of them, by the hill of Moray in the valley. This is where they made camp. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give uh, the Midianites into your hand. Least Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand has saved me. You know we're saved by the hand of the Lord. He's a picture of the Lord. Now therefore go and proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, the balm of Gilead. So, uh, and there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. Wow, there was 30,000 men, 30,000 men. Christ's ministry began at 30 years old. Uh, we're just going to do, we just rip it apart. I mean, watch this. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water. Wow, he's going to test them now. You'll be tested. You're going to find out shortly when this day is. Watch this. Bring him down to the water. He says, um, uh, And the Lord said unto Gideon, 
The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that whom I say unto thee shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whosoever I say unto thee, this uh, shall not go with thee, the same uh, shall not go. So whoever I tell you is going to go with you will go, and whoever I said do doesn't. Now, ten is a number of the law. They're being tested by the waters, which is the word, right? What's that? Right, right. That's another connection. So he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, to Gideon, Everyone that lappeth up the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down on his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people um, <laughs> bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So now, right here, you got 9,000, 9,700 of them has got to go. You know why? Because 9,700 of them, at the time of when they're supposed to be aware and looking and on guard, have now ran to the waters because they're thirsty. Why are they thirsty? Why are they thirsty? Because God tested them. He held the water back from them. How can you test somebody who's, you know, how can you test somebody who's not thirsty? How can you test somebody, you know, how can you offer something or test anybody, oh, you know, I'll give you this, you know, and, and they're not even thirsty or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no test there. I'm not thirsty. I, I throw your water away. No. See, what he don't tell you is, they're in, a, they're in a desert, man, in a wilderness. So now with this big separation that goes on, he says, look, I'm going to test them. The last 10,000. 30,000 is too many. They're going to think it's done by their hand and your hand. Send them on their way. There's 10,000 now. I'm going to test them. This is what I want you to do. I want you to bring them to this creek, right? But it don't tell you how long has passed. Probably about three and a half days. <laughs> yeah. No water. They're dying of thirst. Dying. You know what? They don't care about their life. You know, because they're at the point of dying already. So what happens is, now they're at the point of dying. So what happens is, when they finally get to the place, because they're being tested, they're an army. They get to this place. There's the water. God says, okay, now tell them they can drink. They all take out, I can see it, in a big run. Right? 9,700, 10,000 of them. We run to the water. You see them swimming and, uh, and drinking. And, uh. and that's 300. Bent down, cupping the water in their hand, watching. He says, see those? You see, it wasn't about the water. It was about the watching. Huh. You'll be tested. And you will be tried in the end time. So when the food stores open up, and they say, hey, you can come get it. Just come get your mark or whatever it might be or however they do it. If you have to starve, starve. But I guarantee you, according to the word, he's going to make provision for you. Watch this. Now that's 300. He says, and I'm just about finished. He says, um, the Lord said unto Gideon, uh, and he, likewise, everyone that bows a knee, and I, Lord said to Gideon, by 300 men that lapped up, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into the land, into the hand. So here you got Gideon, who's a type of Christ, in three. Three days, 300, three years. I mean, it, it's crazy. Well, watch this. How, where did he test them at? Waters. Right? It's, it's crazy. How amazing the word is. He says, um, uh, number one, uh, let me go back. Oh, let me tell you, the dog lappeth up. All those that lappeth up like a dog, here's Gideon who is a picture of Christ. The ones that are lapping up like a dog, the dog in the Bible is the Gentiles. Is it right for me to take the bread of the children and cast it to the Gentile dogs? 
He told the Samaritan woman. Uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb was the only two that crossed out of the wilderness. Joshua is Hoshea, Yeshua, and Caleb, right? His name means dog, Gentile. Oh, man. Anyway, watch this. I'm almost done. Sorry. I'm not sorry. It's good. So the people took vit, uh, victuals in their hand. Watch this. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he set all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent. So they took food, and they took a trumpet, and he said, now go to your tent. Right? And, um, and retain those 300 men. And the host of the Midian was beneath him in the valley. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. What, man? He says, And it came to pass the same night. <laughs> what? 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 The same night. Bringing you all the way back to the very beginning. This is, now, this is Pentecost night. Wow. Watch. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise and get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered them into your hand. But if thou, uh, but if thou fear to go down, you know, Christ comes from above down. He's on the mountains. They down in the valley. When the, Christ returns, he goes to the valley of Jehosh. I mean, the valley of Megiddo. Right? Here it is. Same thing. Exact same thing. For if thou fear to go down, go with uh, Faru, thy servant, uh, to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went down uh, with Faru, his servant, unto outside uh, of the armed men that were down in the host. So they came down a mountain and came close to the camp. And it's at night. It's at midnight. So he wants to know. God has given me assurance that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Right? And the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for a multitude and their camels with without number as the sand of the sea and the multitude. That's the exact same thing that's said in Revelations at the Battle of Armageddon. They're like the sand of the sea without number. Exact words. And when Gideon was come down, watch this. Watch. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. He, Gideon hears this. And said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley. What did I just tell you? 49 days of the barley harvest. Gideon is a picture of Christ in the barley harvest. The barley has already been harvested. How do you know that? Really simple. God told Gideon, out of 30,000 men, he drew a harvest of 300 out of. <sighs> Did you hear me? Are you with me? Yes, yes. Surely, watch, twofold, watch what he says. I dreamed a dream, and a cake of barley bread tumbled unto the host of Midian. Judgment. Judgment was coming to Midian. A cake of barley, Christ the first fruits, barley harvest, the barley, the judgment, is coming down on the Midianites, right? And it came unto the tent, tent, Sukkoth booth men, temple, judgment, and it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along dead down this is the dream and his fellow answered this guy in a tent that Gideon hears listen what he says now this is nothing other else save the sword of Gideon and wait this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon the son of Joash, the Benjamite, the son of the right hand. This is the sword of the son of the right hand. The axe head. 
Watch. And God delivered Midian into all of the host. Wait. And his fellow answered, verse 14, and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For unto his hand hath God delivered the Midian judgment and all the hosts. Wow. All judgment has been delivered unto the hand of God. Right? And, and it was so. When Gideon, watch this, heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation of that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Now let me just tell you something. Watch. They go to him at midnight. Now, they go, it's midnight, 12 o'clock midnight. He comes down to go down from a high mountain into a valley to sneak up to a camp to hear what's being said. Do you think that took about five minutes? I don't think so. It probably took about three hours. Because three hours later would be the fourth watch and when the Lord returns. Ah. Can you go up and down a big old mountain in Israel in a half an hour or an hour? I'm going to tell you, I've been there. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. So when, a war, when Gideon goes down with his servant and comes back up, now he says, hey, it's time. It's Pentecost. If it's Pentecost, Pentecost, we know you blow the trumpet on Pentecost and there's fire on Pentecost and let's see. Let's see what happens. So, and it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, Lord, hath delivered uh, Midian's entire hand. And he, divided, uh, and he divided the 300 men into three companies. Jesus, you know, had three close, right? Peter, James, and John. It just don't stop. You know, these are men of the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, it only gathered out of, I think, five or six of them. But it, it, it's there. So plain as day. And he says, And he divided 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with, an em with empty pitchers, and lamps was put inside of the pitcher. Wow. A trumpet in one hand. A pitcher is a vessel that holds water. Amen. Jesus prophesied in John 7 that when he told, in John 4, he told the Samaritan woman at John 4 that if you were to ask me, I'd have given you drink, right? I'd have given you living waters. And the living waters, John says, in John chapter 7, the prophecy, when Jesus stood up and said, when Jesus said, in the Feast of Trumpets, watch this, the last great day, of the Feast of Tabernacles, I'm sorry, it says, on that last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, because the last great day is, it's called the eighth day in the Feast of Tabernacles, just so happens to be what's called Pentecost, the last great day. 49 days, Pentecost. So Jesus, in the fall feast, showing us that the fall feast is the spring feast, stands up on the last great day, the eighth day in the Feast of Tabernacles, and said, you know, brethren, all you who are thirsty, come and let them drink of me. Right? For I will give you living waters. Right? Watch what he says now. John chapter 7, when he says this in John chapter 7, amazing, look what he says. Now Jesus, I'm going to read it, it says, um, he says, uh, verse 37, John 7, 37, in the last day of that great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his bellies shall flow rivers of living water. He, 
Jesus on that day now says what that day is the fulfillment of. And he says, next verse, but this he spake of the Holy Spirit, which they the believers on him would receive on the day of Pentecost. That fulfillment of what he said. The last day, the great day, is the, called the water libation. When the water is poured out in the Feast of Tabernacles. Now God stands up and he says, you know what I'm doing? As the priest is pouring out the water libation, he stands up and says, I am the water. I am the word. If you're thirsty, come unto me. That feast that he stood up and proclaimed in the water libation, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, was fulfilled on Pentecost. Yes. Why? Because the Feast of Pentecost is where you receive your new body. Where you receive your new tabernacle. You see, the fall feast is the spring feast. <laughs> what? What? They're one. They're exactly the same. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Yeah, he, Christ, he fulfilled it already. They say he hasn't. Yes, he has. He was born. Rosh Hashanah, the heralding of the angels. The beginning of the new year, child's born. Son in heaven. Right. Watch. He's born now. He's called the lamb that's now placed in a feeding trough. Day of atonement. Eat his body, drink his blood. He was made to be eaten. Day of Atonement, the Lamb was killed on a Day of Atonement. That feast foreshadowed what was coming in the spring. Hidden in the old, revealed in the new. One in the same. Oh. At the beginning, at the beginning of the barley harvest, you see the Feast of Tabernacles is seven days with a last great day. The counting of the barley harvest is seven weeks of seven, right? And then a last great day. Mere image. At the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles, you could say the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. There's a tent. Well, that is the beginning. Right? So when Jesus came up out of the ground, he came up with a new body. And so did all those other ones that came up out of the ground. Feast of Tabernacles. You see, in the fall feast, it's seven days with one, la with one great day. In the new covenant, in the new covenant with Christ, it's seven weeks of seven. Ooh. And if I go even further back, you find out the 70 weeks of seven before Christ dies and raises up and receives a new body. Whether it's 70 weeks of seven, seven sevens, or seven, it's tabernacles! <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> I know it's deep. Yeah. It's so deep we're swimming in it. How deep is your well? Let me finish. So now you know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, Jesus Christ himself said on the Feast of Tabernacles, what you are seeing manifested today, we saw fulfilled on Pentecost. Because he said, it's out of you shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of. And they all would realize, wow, the water libation and the pouring out of the oil and the water on the altar. Who? what is the fulfillment of what happened on the day of Pentecost?
one and the same feast. Here, and I'm done. Watch what he says. Now, you know it's Pentecost. You know the barley harvest has been harvested by Gideon. So now, you know, here we see the coming of the Lord. Right? He's coming down. Watch what happens. His name, his father's name, and he says, he says, uh, he says, um, and he said unto them, verse 17, he divided, in verse 16, he divided them into 300 men, unto three companies, and he put a trumpet into that, uh, he put a trumpet in one hand and a pitcher in the other. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. Well, I only do what I see my father do. And behold, when I come outside the camp, it shall be that as I do, so you shall do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets on every side of the camp and say, wow, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Why? Because this is a future reference of God coming down, bringing judgment on the enemy in camp. He says, so Gideon and the 300 men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. The beginning of the middle watch is 12 o'clock. The beginning, I'm sorry, the beginning of the middle watch is at 6 to 9 is the first. The beginning of the middle. No. The middle watch is 12. He came to him at 12 o'clock. Watch this. So Gideon, that's right, it's, he's right in the middle of it. He says, so, so Gideon um, and a hundred men, they came in the beginning of the middle of the watch and they had but newly set the watch just at the beginning when they blew the trumpets. Twelve o'clock, the tw ten virgins, twelve midnight. The bridegroom's coming, the bridegroom's coming, right? And they break the pitchers. Wow. We're earthen vessels. Amen. Judgment is coming. They broke the pitchers. Why? Listen. Oh my God. Listen to me. They go up there at night. They all up on the mountain. 100, 200, 300. 301 with Gideon. Right? So now they all up there. They got a trumpet in one hand. Watch. Out of, watch. There was a harvest that was harvested. Okay? Out of that harvest came another harvest. And out of that harvest, we get these 300 that are there at Pentecost. These 300, these 300 are carrying fire. Are you with me? Listen, these 300, 300 represent you and me. We are the carriers of the Holy Spirit, the fire. Was it not fire that came down on top of their head? Watch. Though physically, they, people can't see the fire, which is the, the Word, God, inside of us. Inside of this picture, this earthen vessel. As soon as the trumpets are blown, woo! Smash the pictures. That's your old earthly body. And the fire is revealed. They look up. Because they're in the valley. They see the sword of the Lord and the host. The, the host of the armies of the Lord coming down. What did you say? Fire. That's what I said. Amen. <coughs> uh, uh, alien ain't got nothing on this. Uh, uh, tear me open and it's a flame. <laughs> get too close, you get burned. They didn't have to do anything. Watch. Come out of the space skins. Fire. Ah! 
they start killing one another. Here comes the barley cake, Jesus, with the harvest. The army of the Lord, the army, the sword of the Lord and of the son of the right hand. The axe head, the hewer of trees. Coming down a hill like a big cake roll. Flattens the tents. <laughs> Can we really get <laughs> what? Man, look, <laughs> and he says... And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands and blew with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord. Man, they think Jesus is coming, Bubba. They think God's coming. When it, you, that word right there, Lord, is Yahweh. They said, the sword of Yahweh. They are in a valley. They hear this voice, the trump, the voice of God, fire, the sword of God. What did you say? Oh my God, get out of the way. And they just start killing people and get out of that. Son. <laughs> did I bring you there? Because he just brought me there. I never saw it like that before. <laughs> Man! Man! Can you imagine in the valley? 300 over here. I mean, 100 over here. 100 over there. 100 over here. Why? Because in that arena, they had mountains around them. They had camped in a valley. <laughs> what? You hear a big trumpet roar! They look up the heavens. They look up out the valley. All they see is light and fire. And here, oh the Lord. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Get out the way. The stampede can't even tell you. That's why it said the barley cake that came down, the tents were flattened. He's amazing, huh? Uh -huh. For all my brothers, for all my brothers out there, I said, did you heard me? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, and did I tell you? This happens on Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> Must I say any more? Hey, how would you like to be here Wednesday night? And all we hear, Ooh, the Lord of the Lord, son of a gun! What did you say? I'd be running away. I'd be running outside. <laughs> Open up. Nope, it's not him. I don't know. <laughs> so guess what? When you hear the king is coming and you don't ah, open up and fire is revealed, well, then it ain't him. <laughs> but if all of a sudden, bam, you just catch on fire and that flesh is consumed. Oh. What did you say? That's what I thought you said. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Watch this. Can I finish? I'm trying. Here we go. And the three companies broke their pitches and held their lamps in their left hands, trumpets in their right hands, and blew with all their might and cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. They didn't move. And the host ran and cried and fled. And three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. That's when the Lord comes, the valley of Armageddon. They're going to kill one another. They're going to flip when they see the real king of kings and lord of lords. Not no projected image in the heavens of some false coming of a Messiah. Amen. When he tears open the skies, Bubba, it's going to be the real deal. And they're going to be like, we are definitely following the wrong guy. <laughs> Man. Did you know all this was in the story of Gideon? <laughs> well, let me try to finish. And they stood every man in his place. 
And the 300, verse 22, blew their trumpets, and they set every man's sword against himself, even through all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Bethshitta and uh, Zarathah, and unto the border of Abel Meloah, unto Tabath. You got to go, if you want to get more stuff, go open up those names. <laughs> Watch this. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together unto Naphtali. That's where Jesus was born. That's where he was conceived, I'm sorry. He was born in Bethlehem, conceived between Zebulun and Naphtali in a little place called Nazareth. And the men gathered themselves unto Jesus Christ. And out of them, and out of... And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim saying, watch, wow, he sends messengers to gather to the battle. What, what, what did you say? The word of the Lord sent the messengers out, said, go get the wheat harvest. Whether you want to call these guys the wheat harvest or them the wheat harvest, he's gathering them up. It's a gathering, right? Judgment gathering. Day of Pentecost. He says, God sent the messengers throughout Mount Ephraim saying, come down against the Midianites. Take before them the waters unto Bethbara, Bethabara. Oh my God. That's where Jesus was baptized. Bethabara, the threshold of the door. In, in the Jordan, he says. Then all the men of Ephraim, doubly fruitful, double portion, gathered themselves and took waters unto Bethabara. Took the waters unto the Jordan where Jesus was, baptized people. And they took two princes of the, Midi of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew them upon the rock of Oreb. Oreb? Kind of sound like Horeb. Oreb means rock. The rock that was cleaved in the middle, that split, the waters ran out. Go to that place where the rock was standing in the Jordan. And out of me, if you believe me, on this day of Pentecost, out of Oreb, the split rock, because that was the day of Pentecost, shall flow rivers of living water. The Bible says, when the Lord returns, that the mountain cleaves in the middle and healing waters runs out into the Dead Sea and it's healed and into the miry places. Oh, Zechariah 14. People, <coughs> all I can tell you is to be continued until He returns. Let's pray. Father, All I can say, Father, is those that worship you, worship you in spirit and in truth, and thank you for giving us your truth, your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Lord, I pray that everybody in here will be in that wheat harvest when you come. Our family, our loved ones, and whoever it else, Father, it is, that you gather. Help us to gather and not scatter. To be a part of one man. The man. Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Amen and amen.